episode 41. Let's Google that. <laughs> <laughs> Hello and welcome to the Pink Hair Girl podcast. My name is Sally Jane and uh, Rachel is podcasting with me again today. <laughs> it is Wednesday, the somethings of June, no the idea. 17th. It probably doesn't matter because people don't watch it on the same day. It takes well, us a while it's to upload. The 17th anyway. of June. <clears throat> is it? Yes. Look, no, because of the computer right there. Oh, does it say so on the computer? In the bottom corner. And yeah. also yesterday was Youth Day, the public yeah. holiday, which is always the 16th of June. So, yes, it is apparently the 17th of June. We're recording on Wednesday yeah. again because Monday, there was a um, public holiday on Tuesday. And so a lot of people, including the schools, thought that there was no point in going to work on Monday or having schools open on Monday. We might as well make it a extra long weekend. So, um Except for Papa's work. Yes, Papa went to work. and But Titus was off from school, and that always makes it harder to Do podcast. Yeah, and I don't know, because we podcast on the last Wednesday and Friday. Monday um, seemed too soon. She did seem too soon, didn't it? But we do hope to get back to Monday podcasting yeah. next week, unless you go to Granny. Actually, you just get to get us podcasting whenever we can, because that's just the way it is with three children. Sorry, the dogs were barking. Um, I have no idea what we're saying. But anyway, we're here and we're podcasting and we're doing it um, today. Today, yes, that's basically what it is. And you're watching it whenever you're watching it. And hello, welcome. What have we been doing since we last podcast, Rachel? Um, uh, Gosh, you make our life sound so exciting. What? <laughs> We went to the um, oh, fire and ice. ice on Sunday. Yes. I don't know. Those of you that watched a while back when I went to the bloggers meetup will remember that I got a, a voucher from Zomato, which is a, a, a app that you use on your phone to look up and review restaurants and see what other people are saying about restaurants and locate places near you and all that kind of thing. So they um, were talking about the app at the bloggers meetup. And they gave away some vouchers. And this one was to the Fire and Ice Hotel in Cape Town. Excuse me. <coughs> and we went. They're quite famous for having really amazing milkshakes. So we took the children there. So they all got dressed up smart. Well, not totally. We just kind of didn't go in our lying around house clothes. They all got to look pretty and tight. <laughs> Titus said he needed to keep, could he save his head? It wasn't he needed to keep it warm, he needed to keep something. So anyway, he wore like this floppy sun hat kind of thing. It was really funny. Anyway, and so they've got milkshakes like um, a Ferro Rocha milkshake and um, brownie, Rocky Road. Rocky Road, and Rocky Road has marshmallows, cherry. Cherries, chocolate, all sorts of things. Nuts. <laughs> That. And there's one with Turkish Delight, and there's one with... Which one did you have? What did I have in the end? Uh, you can look it up on your phone. I'm trying to remember what I had. I don't know, Papa had the coffee one. Yeah. Titus had one called Tempo, which is like a Tempo chocolate with, um, which has got caramel in it. And The boys' ones were both really, <coughs> really, really sweet. Do you think so? You don't like such sweet stuff. What did you, you had the Fair Russia one. This was very rich. Did you like it? Yes. Uh, and yeah. yeah, so we went for that, and that was quite fun. Um, when did we do that? On Saturday? Sunday? Sunday. Sunday. What did we do on Saturday? Um, did we just say that? Uh, we did something on Saturday. <laughs> oh, it's Kim's party! <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> we had a, a, a massive Minecraft party. How could we even get I don't it? know. On um, Saturday, so if anybody, I'm going to do, I'll do a blog post on it because um, it actually is quite an effort to put pictures. My laptop handles, you know, it's, I've only got a MacBook Air, which has a very small processor, so it manages ha um, editing the podcast fine, but once I start trying to add in too much stuff, like last week when I was putting a lot of photos in and a lot of stuff, it started it kept to, on crashing. Yeah, it was starting to complain to me a little bit. So 
and there were a lot of pictures from the Minecraft party. So if anyone's interested in the Minecraft party or how you do it or the principles or all of that kind of thing, I'll actually just do a separate blog post. Blog post. I think that's easier anyway. And some mm. listeners aren't very interested in Minecraft. Yes, yeah, some people might not be interested in Minecraft. And if you're only vaguely interested but not interested enough to read a whole blog post, then you can go and look on my Instagram. Okay. Actually, Instagram is a good way to have a look at what we're doing during the week, so I don't have to add in too many pictures, because I think it's such a nice, um, mm -hmm. you know, you, you get pictures and stuff, like kind of instant access. What are you looking for? My thing, my crochet needle's not in my bag. Have you got nothing to do and you're fiddling about? Yes, my crochet needle's in my crochet hook bag. You didn't plan very well. <laughs> Isn't the cup motto be prepared or something? Scouts. Is that the scarf motto? No, yeah. Okay, don't the cubs use the same one? No, cubs do not have the same motto. What's the cub motto? The do your best or something? Do your best. Okay. <laughs> and I do my best bringing everything. Anyway, so, right. Rachel is not prepared <laughs> to do any crafting during the podcast. It's probably a good thing because I'm multitasking and talking about everything at the same time. Okay, so that's a bit about our week. Um, Knitting. Shall we get on to the knitting? Yes. Please. Are we going to tell them what happened or are we not going to tell them? You must tell them. Must we tell them? Yes. Do you think so? No, people will ask. Well, no one's asked yet. People will. But I thought we could just pretend that it didn't happen. It did. It did. What happened? Sadly, Dave died. Dave died. Our chicken. Which did highlight to me the... the that I perhaps didn't think terribly much about um, naming my chicken after a friend. Um, yeah, that did that did feel a bit weird. Who was Dave? Uh, Knit Monkey on, on the FO and Die podcast. Oh. The lady's got uh, so purple I... hair. So Dave has sometimes got pink hair and blue hair and green hair. And, then so... and he also plays Minecraft and all the rest. So why is that upsetting? Well, because kind of when you name your pet after someone and then they die, then you feel bad for the for your friend, like as though you know that's a bad name. No, not that it's a bad name. I just feel like I have to tell Dave his chicken died. <laughs> but you know, the problem with chickens is it's very hard to know what's wrong what's wrong with them they present the same sort of symptoms for the same sort of thing for all sorts of things and you know she wasn't there was no respiratory she wasn't coughing she just um she had very very droopy wings they were her wings sort of they don't chickens hold their wings quite up and so and when they're, they're kind of almost flopping you're down just only able to see one of their flight patterns yeah so when they when their wings are kind of flopped down then you know there's something a bit wrong and she was standing outside Falling asleep while she's eating. Yeah, or so she kept trying to fall asleep while she's eating. And as terrible as it sounds, I mean, I have pet insurance on my two dogs because I know how expensive vet bills are. But having six chickens, I can't have pet insurance on six chickens. And most of the local vets around here don't deal with chickens. They don't know birds very well. You know, they do dogs and cats and that sort they of thing. They give you an actually... assessment and say they have this, there's no cure. Well, most of them just don't know. You know, they can give them a shot of antibiotics or, or whatever. But it is a little bit out of my budget to rush chickens to to the vet, unfortunately. Um, and the only ones that deal with birds are very far away. Very, very. Yeah. They might die of, of trauma. On the on way. The anyway, so we read some stuff, and one of the things was to use uh, olive oil to, um, if they've got anything sort of blocking, you know, up either the egg bound or there's if, if the if the croup has got too full or whatever um so you put extra olive oil in their food and so i made her some scrambled egg and i put olive we separated it out from the rest of chickens and then the other thing you can do is you can do an epsom salt bath because that not um, very easy. <laughs> no it wasn't so basically epsom salts help the body to detoxify and to you know get rid of anything that's going on um I've spoken about doing Epsom salt baths before. Oh, it's really yeah. good for people as well, yeah. So we did that. We brought her inside and we gave her a bath in this little bucket basin thing. 
and she Dave likes the water. She actually did. She tolerated it very well. She just she stood did, there. She doesn't stand. <clears throat> she went and stood in the water bowl. In the water, anyway. Yeah. And then she he sloshed about and it made it all dirty. <laughs> So we gave her an Epsom salt bath and then we hair dried her because they, I mean, chickens actually sort of have a, their feathers are quite waterproof, you know, it sort of runs off. So once you've got them wet from underneath, we needed to sort of hair dry her. So you put the hair dry on a low and temperature and she actually quite liked it. It was quite surprising. Watched, I thought she really wouldn't like it. We watched the video it, and it said that they really like it and she sat there, eyes closed. She just sat on Rachel's it. lap and we hair dried her. So we kind of felt like we got to spend yeah, time with her, hey. And then we put her in the in yeah. Pippin's crate, yeah. and we cleaned out the crate. Pippin didn't like that. Um, just that she was sort of isolated in, in one area, and we put some food there. And she ate, and she drank, and she had the water. We put the heater on so the room wasn't too cold. Um, I've got one that you can set the temperature. So I said that it didn't get too hot, but that it just took the sort of edge off the air in yeah, case she was a little bit it was a bit cold back then. yeah we don't have um central heating so the, the houses can be a bit because, cold in the winter because it doesn't get that cold that you need it yeah so we put the heat on um and then we covered it up for the night and the next morning sadly she was dead i so, ran through early in the morning yeah first thing put pippin outside so he could go to the toilet run through so anyway, that was on Friday, hey? Yeah. Papa came home and because we had to get everything ready for the party. Minecraft party, Papa very kindly buried her for us. Because we can't bury a chicken. So yes, that was very sad. And I might, again, now I've said I'm not going to include as many pictures. I was going to include a few pictures of Dave. I'll either include some pictures of Dave or I'll do a blog post about Dave. Do a blog post. Should I do a blog post about Dave? Hmm. We'll see. Anyway, so the that is our sad. With a necklace. With a necklace. She had a necklace around her neck. Oh, uh, like, she had a uh, like whitish feathers. White that feathers kind of, all around know, her neck. Around looked like a it. necklace. She was very pretty, and she was actually doing so well. She was one that had one of the best feathers growing in, and she looked better than Gucci, yes. and she's got lots of feathers. She was really so. You just never know, and I mean, especially they came. Yeah, especially they came from such a stressful. Background. We don't know had what. Disease or something she's had. It's very hard. She to could know. have had cancer or something. Could have. We've kept an eye on the others, and so far nobody else seems sick. And they did say to us that I mean the rescue chickens don't. I mean you get about a year, at two years if you're very lucky, and anywhere up to a year, and you've done really well. So I didn't expect all of them to survive the full year. And I think that she had a better life than what she'd had <laughs> before, and she managed to get something. And the, she was, she's she always so been, friendly, wasn't she? She was, you could, she was the first one that would let you touch her. Mm. And she was the, she would actually, you could. She'd eat off her. your hand and she'd let you She's the friendliest her. chicken we've ever had. Yeah. She was more friendly than um, Leia was. Mm. Anyway. It's actually surprising that they, most of them are friendlier than Leia was. <laughs> So that is our sad chicken news. Anyway, let's get on with the knitting because we've been blathering for ages as usual. It's been about 10, 11 minutes. 11 minutes, yeah. Right, let's get on with, um, who wants to go first? You, you can say when and I'll say when. Okay, what are we doing? Whips or finished objects? Uh, We're so organised. Uh, you didn't do any show notes, you can do finished objects. Finished objects first. Okay. So I like finished objects. <laughs> you like finished objects? Yes. Yeah. Yes, yeah, Sally said last time we had to record the finished objects because that's the part everyone likes to watch. <laughs> so I still know you're not supposed to include a sock as a, or half a sock as a finished object, but what? I don't care. I think half a sock is a finished object. This sock is finished. <laughs> it is an object by itself. Well, it's almost finished object. Yes, I know, but you've got to show that in whoops. You can't <laughs> jump the gun now. You chose finished objects. So this is my... Uh, June socks, goodness me. There we go. The, uh, in the youth day colorway. It's not from. Up as much. No, it's, it's not. It's much prettier. It's much more. But the stripes are much prettier. And it's quite a bright orange it's in not between, as actually. Dull. Yeah. Um, and that brown, that blue is not showing up. It's quite. It's, anyway. So these are our the, youth day socks. Sally would say they're not finished objects. In, 
<laughs> more cheesy because they haven't said the ends in oh well you know um so this is on the heart lamb youth day colorway yes and what's the base what is her base the twinkle sock no um the twinkle sock base is the one with uh sparks uh, in from electric carnation I think it's Calvinia. Where do you see if my book with it stands up with all the little labels in it on my desk? I meant to bring that because I often don't tell everyone what the yarn is. So this is Heartlamb's yarn with sock yarn with nylon. And she gives her yarn bases names from um, places in South Africa. And so I think it's Calvinia. Um, but I'm not 100% sure. Please bring it here quickly. Cal uh, sock. Oh, toolbox sock. Right. So this is my book that I then have all my... It's so full and it doesn't sit. It doesn't close. So there's the Youth Day by Heartland in the Tilbach sock base. And Tilbach is 80% superwash, 10% cashmere and 10% nylon. What's cashmere? Uh, what is cashmere? Uh, it's from a... From a goat. A sheep? No, not a sheep. Wolves for the sheep. Uh, a llama. No, cashmere is a goat. But you get a. No, now isn't Angora a goat? Oh no, man! Now you've got me. I do know this. <laughs> Everybody's shouting at the screen, aren't they? Cashmere. My uh, kids ask me things all the time, and then I say we have to ask a goat. There we go, a goat. Cashmere is a wolf. And, uh, Fiber obtained from a cashmere goat. There we go. See, I am so clever. Huh? How, no, look, there's even a picture of a cashmere goat. How cute does that look? You have to show that. I know, I was just waiting for it to. He's got huge horns. <laughs> there is the picture of the. Cashmere. That's not coming up very well. Anyway, so cashmere goat. <laughs> it's quite a soft and sort of. You can feel those are really nice and sort of soft feeling. Uh, cashmere is sort of thought of as a, of a hat. Cashmere is thought of as quite a sort of a luxury fiber. So yes, this is my can little have book. A cashmere goat. And then I keep all my bits and pieces and any you know, letters that I get from anybody or. So um, mom's book is quite. Yeah, I try to put a little yarn sample in as well. Um, so anyway, so that's that. Um, and I'm nearly finished. How far am I on sock two? I don't want to knit two because I'm like, now knitting while I'm talking. I and don't want to knit too far, far on. And then I'm not going to have... Oh, look at that. I'm only a couple of... Ooh, right. Rib time. Start. Yeah, look. <clears throat> exactly rib time. Exactly rib time. Yes. <laughs> so, yes, I'm on the ribbing of sock two. Oh, so like now we do works in progress and um, finish objects all at the same time. Just do your bit. It's for do your it's my next, <laughs> next finished object. My next finished object. I was asked by a friend to make um, a, a square down? for a... I know. I'm there yet. I'm just smoothing it and talking about it. I it. was asked by a friend to make a blanket square Um for somebody that she knows, but she couldn't knit, so she asked me if I would do it. And the uh, design that she wanted was the Leleche League breastfeeding picture. So I don't know if you can see that. That's supposed to be the lady and then the little the baby's little baby in the head. Sun. And then this is the baby's arm. And yeah. then the mom's arms come in the rest. So I made that in this sort of dusty. Is it looking like a dusty pink on there? Yeah. I don't know if it's looking like a dusty pink. Okay. And I key, I realized when I edit the podcast that I sometimes forget to tell you what yarns things are. And of course, with knitting podcasts, that's the point, isn't it? To tell you what you're knitting, what the pattern is, and what the yarn is, so if you want to make it. So this is called the Breastfeeding Advocacy Dishcloth by Elizabeth Grant. It's a free pattern on Ravelry. Um, very Quite easy to follow. I sat and did it while watching Grey's Anatomy. Which and, is very loud. Oh, it's very loud. They shout all the time. Well, they do like traumas and casualties and things coming in. Even and this is I, from. I listen to music while I read Hollywood. <laughs> this is from Jaeger Matchmaker Merino Four Ply that I got from 
that bag of all of yes things. with all the stuff that got in and i know that last time i didn't remember what her name was uh, uh instamatic luli on instagram i think she's just luli on Ravelry. And so it's a hundred percent merino four ply. It I held it. Smells very hard. I okay. held it double and used a soft. formal needle. So yeah, done. And she can come and collect that for her the blanket that they're making. So that was the one thing I did quickly this week. And my other finished object, again, yeah. as usual with no ends ever sewn in, is another log, log cabin square. <laughs> Hey, just pull my blanket down. <laughs> how, so how many? Animals? Five. I've done five I now. I haven't even seen that square. That's not my fault. And it's said last week. Well, from Thursday or Friday, I can't remember. Um, so I think I counted that mine was going to be five, five by, six. by six. So I've got one bottom row. bottom row. So you need to put it together now. Well, I don't have the yarn to put it together with. I need to get some... Black. You know, I will sometimes use it because I will steal it. <laughs> no, you won't. You will knit your own. If your brother can knit one, then you can knit one. Well, you there'll be no yarn left for me to knit one when you're finished. Oh, shame. You'll have to buy yourself some. <laughs> but Caleb gets all the yarn. <laughs> no, he doesn't. Anyway, so talking about... I've been meaning to talk about Grey's Anatomy for ages. And now that I've mentioned it, I thought I'll have my little talk. I... <laughs> While the geek is studying, we often watch series together and we watch kind of most of the geeky series and you know, there's quite a few things we watch together. So while he has been studying in the evenings, I thought I would pick something, but there is no way he would want to watch. And in that case, he would carry on with his studying and I could what? watch. So I picked Grey's Anatomy because I remember watching a few seasons in the very beginning, um, but I never watched any further. Um, I seem to have moved countries and then some were ahead and some were behind. Anyway, so I got it on Netflix and I started watching Grey's Anatomy. Needless to say that the geek is totally <laughs> absorbed in it as well. He keeps on, um, he'll hear a bit from, he also studies with headphones that so he can't hear it, but occasionally he'll hear stuff or he'll take a break and then he'll come and sit down and watch with me and he sometimes doesn't go back to studying as quick as he should anyway and then, I'm, then he goes back and studies because he feels bad then I'm constantly having to catch him up but anyway so I really like Grey's Anatomy but I have a little bugbear with the Grey's Anatomy makers and the way they portray knitting because they really do um like perpetuate this idea that knitting is either for like the, the one woman who's decided she's not dating anymore and she's going to be like celibate or whatever, takes up knitting to keep her occupied or busy while she's not dating. Like it's this sort of thing that old people do or, or sad people that aren't dating anybody do sitting at home. And then the one woman's in her hospital bed knitting because she then got sick and so now she's knitting a scarf for somebody. And then there was another, they showed knitting and something else. But they kept like referring to it as this sort of sad thing i know it really annoyed me because so, knitting is cool so shout at them oh what do they care they're like a multi-million dollar program they don't care if i think that they didn't portray knitting all very the well list, <clears throat> all the knitters that watch or even don't watch they can shout at them oh. and then you can make it an anti no <laughs> bad knitting i know and i actually quite like grades nationally so i didn't um yeah, so that was my only bugbear with Grey's Anatomy, is the way they portray knitting. We need some TV series that is going to get with the more modern idea of knitting and that portrays knitting in a much more positive light. Because maybe it was only old grannies that used to knit, but I mean, there is a huge knitting uh, resurgence watches. or whatever happening, which is handcraft in general. I think people are really enjoying getting back into Sort of doing hand crafts but i was speaking to the converted since you are all not only knitters and crocheters and whatever but you watch knitting podcasts so you're quite firmly in the knitting addict <laughs> category so i'm totally speaking to the converted that said i've been surprised by how many people in my um instagram timeline that i knew from other places you know um blogging and social networks and and in and around Cape Town and mom's forums and things like that that have started 
knitting and crocheting and crafting that I would never have presumed that that was, you know, something that they did. I think it really is starting to to become bigger. And certainly in South Africa, it hasn't been as, it's not as big here as it is overseas. Certainly, in America so. and England. Mm -hmm. I mean, we don't have, I mean, we don't have Change anything shops. near the number of, of yarn, um, shops. yarn shops, you know, local yarn and shops. Diet. It's still, still mostly online. I think Sally and I counted up that for South Africa, I think we have 10 indie dyes that we could count. And some of those only dye cotton in set colors. You know, they've got a color range. And I think at least four of those only dye cotton. Those that do sock yarn with nylon that we could use for our year of socks, I think there are only... Um. There is Electric Carnation. There's Heart Lamb. There is Gina that's just launched her um, Stella yarn. Fiber Works yarn. Um, Sally's what? Yarn Pimp. Sally's Yarn Pimp, yes. Gina from, she um, has uh, sock yarn with nylon. Uh, yarn Stash in Peter Maritzburg has yarn with nylon in it. I think that's it. Those four, five. So, you know, the choices here and for when I'm when I'm doing, um, trying to buy fiber for Rachel, um, now that she's become a sort of a spinning addict and she spins through the fiber quite quickly, I'm having to try and find... The pink and purple took a, a take, did, the purple took a long time and the pink is taking a long time. Sure, but I mean, if you think it's about, to, what, two weeks and you finished? So I'm kind of thinking ahead. If you're sewing that, uh, spinning that in a week or two, then I have to kind of think ahead that you've got enough. How much um, fiber do you have left to spin? Um, I have the one mm -hmm. that I'll never spin because I like it so much. The, oh, the, the, that uh, one that you got in the... No. When Electric Carnation okay. first sent you that I'm spindle. To, that is my second next. My next one will, no, my third next. My next one will be a gr the green I got in the bag. Mm -hmm. Do you want me to just go fetch the bag? Go fetch the bag. Um, anyway, so the other thing I was thinking was that Caleb and my dad, those of you that have watched the podcast from way back, will know that Caleb and my dad were supposed to go overseas last year to go and visit my sister and had tickets booked and everything. And then my mom got, there was a problem with, first of all, there's a problem with visas. And then there was a, um, then my mom got very sick. <clears throat> and so they decided to wait until my mother was better before they went. So my mom has now finished her chemotherapy and her radio. Well, she's finished all the bad, oh, goodness me. Um, she's finished all the bad chemotherapy. She's just got the one targeted Herceptin, which you have which she's got to have every three weeks still until the end of the month. But it doesn't actually make her feel bad at all. So that's not – she just she just gets very tired. Like she didn't stay the whole time for Kato's party because she finds she gets quite tired. So she, you know, she just has to pace herself a little bit. So it's very frustrating because you don't feel unwell. You just get up in the morning and you have all these plans of what you want to do and you don't realize how quickly your energy is going to run out. So, because my dad and Caleb are going to go over to England, I think they're thinking of going round about October. I am busy thinking of all the things that I want from England that we can't, you know, always get here. And I'm starting to do not a lot because, I mean, it's still the, wow, the pound to rand exchange rate. We pay almost 20 rand for one pound. It's 19 something at the moment, which just makes the things very very expensive um but i am sending a few things to my sister's house and uh yeah so what i was going to say was if anybody in england would like to do a little swap with us like a little mini skein swap or a a little something we've got a few mini skeins and i thought to get some maybe a little f a little beaded something 
and maybe like uh, some shells. We went and collected a whole bunch of nice shells from our beach because I know Amelia really likes shells and we were putting a little parcel together for her. So we collected a lot. We did collect a lot. We kind of went a bit overboard. So a we thought. <laughs> <laughs> so we thought uh, like so, like a really but small. I mean, we're not going to do we we can do some swaps, but we can't make them huge, you know. Um, so if anybody in England would like to do a mini skein and a few little things. Swap. Uh, swap, maybe like a little treat or a tea bags or you know, like some a, things like we a, get here and you don't <clears throat> get there, and some things you get there and we don't get here. Something like that, yes. So something that's typical to your area, and we'll try and include a few things like maybe a penguin postcard and a. Yes, we get a lot. There loads of penguins. We get some nice postcards and some little beaded things and stuff like that. So, if you would like to do a little swap with us let us know and if you have I did ask on Instagram last night for places that um, for dyers of fiber in England that I should look at because my sister was asking what to get Rachel for Christmas and for her birthday because she'll also send the stuff back with Caleb when he comes over and her dad was also asking because he lives in England and Caleb might I don't think if you will I don't know if your dad will be offshore but Caleb might Visit, dad. visit your dad and then he could he said that he would send stuff for you guys or post it to Aunt Jenny if he was going to be offshore and not see Caleb so yes if you've got any suggestions of um, dyers and fiber artists and just any knitting things in general uh, those people that make bags or people that make anything that we might need to consider that we wouldn't always post um, here necessarily because of import costs and postage. just postage costs and all of these kind of things. Yeah. And it takes forever to get here. Yes, of course. And all the hats are out quickly though. Well, they, well, not quickly, but we did it in enough time that they had enough time to get here. Yeah, so. It didn't take that long. <coughs> no, it didn't take. It didn't One take of them that took long. a few weeks. Yeah. I mean, the, the post is just what it is. <laughs> Everything gets here in the end. It just. It, it's more that if you know people send stuff to us, they can mark it as a gift, and then we don't pay the import costs. On it. The biggest thing is the import costs. I mean, I know even to England when they buy from American stuff, if it's over thirty dollars or something, thirty-two dollars or something like that, then they also pay quite a high labor letters a gift import costs. Yeah, no, but sellers don't want to, and I agree with that. You know. Sellers will say, please don't tell me to label this as a gift because it's not. It was a, it was a no. purchase and you can't really. Um, but when you send something overseas. When you send it to somebody, yes, it's then it's a gift, then it's fine, yeah. Um, yes, so if anybody would like to do a little swap with us or can tell us good places that we should look at, you know, like for my birthday, for my Christmas presents from the geek, you know, and I can forward the links to him. Or <laughs> I'll uh, have to help him pick. Them. You'll have to help. So what is what is it you want to spin next? Next, I'm going back to a spinning now. Geez, we've done this all over the place today. Is this what you got left from your bag from yes. Helena? This is what I have left. This is very pretty. One. They can't see what's on your lap. I'm going to. I'm getting it out of the bag. <laughs> okay. So this is the one that you got in that parcel from Electric M Electric Carnation. And that you're too scared to bat, and this is the one that you're too scared to spin you. Oh, so. no. I wonder if this see. is the sparkle coming up. It's I'm on sure the we... other side. So there's sparkle everywhere. Let me show you. What? And then inside, it's, it's white. Inside, it's white. I don't think you're supposed to handle it that much, child. White and color. Okay, let's just fold this. Oh, I'm so scared of these things. I'm sure we're going to. It's not, it's strong, Mom. Break it or felt it or something, just looking at it. It's very <laughs> Where's the packet? Let's put it back. Um, so, this is the one that you're too scared to spin. I'm not. You're not. Okay. Are you going to spin it next? No. Or I'm after you finish that? This, <clears throat> this is a piece of white and it's very soft. It's from a uh, black blue, blue face list. Blue face list. I want to call them a black face list because black face sounds a bit more natural than a blue face. I think it's a, I don't know why they called it a blue face list. It's not like they've got a bright, I think they've got a black face, but maybe it's a dark. Why don't they call a black face list? Okay, let's do what we always do when we don't know something. So she's on the phone and this Good is the one I'm too scared to spin. I love it. 
It shows lovely texture and it's got little flecks of white. Oh, this is the Welsh black. Yeah. I think I the spinning's come out very well. I don't want to spin it yet. We don't have to. I don't know what to make with it after I spun it though. Maybe I could put Why it Why don't in you my put hat. all the browns together and the whites? All my browns so that, um, This is very soft though. Like Cara did for a hat. Moby. Oh, we had to stop once for Moby barking already. Moby. <laughs> Pippin. Sorry, we might have to stop again if they. Mobs. Yeah, stop and then because you have to search. <laughs> So Moby's calmed down again. So apparently the blue face, face lester was evolved in a breeding scheme to develop a long wool sheep. So they wanted something with a long thingy. In the 1700s by Robert Bakewell. It was originally known as a Dishley lester. And then it became known as the Hexham lester due to its early concentration in the north of England. Today it is known as the blue face lester and is now the most common breed across the British Isles. Can we get one? Can we get one? Yeah. Where would you want to put it? Uh, we could <coughs> We could move the back washing line and have a bath in its pay. No, it's far too small. They want a big No, field. and then let them graze around the garden once a day. Anyway, so it says that a blue-faced lesser sheep should have a broad muzzle, a good mouth, a tendency towards a Roman nose, bright alert eyes and long erect ears. The colour of the head skin should be dark blue, showing through the white hair. Although a little bit of brown is acceptable. Now I'm just going to enlarge that. And I'm sure lots of people know what a blue, fla blue face Leicester sheep looks like. But that apparently, there should be some blue on its face, showing through the white. Oh, yeah. Does it look like it's blue there? No. Not really. <laughs> so anyway, all I'm going that's to the whole thing Google today. Um, all I'm spinning. <laughs> How do we get onto your spinning? From Grey's Anatomy to England to... What to spin? And then I... We were doing finished objects. How do we finished all the finished objects, so we moved on. Did we? Oh, well, we've promptly moved on. Uh, so we, we spoke about what to get from England. So um, I'm going, in order, I'm going to go... Boom, okay, so let's just talk about boom, your spinning. So this is what you're spinning next. Okay, so you're spinning this one, which says a uh, Chevy. It's which is a very light, light, it's coming up quite white on there, but it's more like a sort it's of a, a very light peppermint green. green. And then you've got then your blue face one. Lester. And then this one, which I think is a merino. No, this is a Falkland. That one's... Which is very nice, isn't it? That's a pretty braid. And then what? And then this one. Mm -hmm. And that one. And then this one, which is extremely short. This is also, I think this is a superwash. Superwash Merino. But why is it soft? Superwash Merino is in the... Uh, I said Merino. I can't say Merino. Merino. Merino is soft. Merino is a very soft wool. That's what How people like. How it's so in much. your socks? How can your so some of your socks with a Superwash Merino in it on soft? Which ones aren't soft? They're all pretty soft. They're really, I mean, you probably haven't felt really crunchy wool. I don't know that I've got anything really crunchy. I'm going to have to get you something... Like really, like one of the um, Scandinavian wools or re those really sort of crunchy, sheepy kind of. <laughs> then you'll know. I had a very, very sheepy kind of wool. That one that's in start here. Maybe. I mean, this one's slightly more This crunchy. one's very nice. Okay. Like anyway, it. put those away. Okay. So mm. order is this one, this one, this one, this one. These two, I haven't decided which one's coming next. And then this one, this one. Aha, uh -huh. is that how it's going? So after that, then she's finished her. That's it. That's the whole. That's her whole five and I have, those, two, I have mm. those. Remember those pink and yellow ones? Oh, there's a little ones. pink and yellow ones. Sorry. But those were and off, they feel very stiff. I think you have to pre draft them. Yes, probably. Um. So that's what you have to spin next and so i'm going to get her some my sister and her dad can get her some things from okay that moves nicely onto whips well. <laughs> that does so what are you working on um uh, my spinning oh it's not stuck in the blank and you're still spinning the same pink from last time hey mm -hmm. and i saw you and sally are doing a thing on instagram where you do a photo a day because you said she wasn't putting much up on instagram and neither, was and neither were you so you're now doing a but picture picture a day for every day time. and yesterday the word was challenge so what have you challenged challenging. or challenging? 
Sally mm. had it's challenging to keep Sparky's hair off her shawl. Yes, because and uh, yours was that you're challenging yourself to spin fifteen minutes. fifteen minutes every day. Okay. So have you shown this? You never shared long enough. to like just put it. Ooh, it's my, I'm not going. Ooh. That's coming spin? up more of that bird. There we go. You see, you've got to give the camera a chance to focus. So there's Rachel spinning. It's not coming up <clears> the right <throat> color though. Yeah, ugh, the camera does what it does. It doesn't always come up perfect. I, spin, and much... I finished the one piece of yarn earlier, so I have to make that yarn fiber. So you've got to join some more. So I've got to join the pink. That's a much better color of what it is. Cool. So, and have you worked on anything else? Uh, I've worked a bit on my arm warmers and a little bit on... No, nothing on Nothing on your blanket. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Right. Well, my... um. I'm very boring. You are. I have to leave. <laughs> You're a rubbish podcast. You've got nothing to show. <laughs> I have to swim and do schoolwork and look after Pippa. And, and it was a public holiday on Monday and Tuesday, so you didn't even swim. It wasn't a public holiday on Monday. Well, Titus, yes, but there was no swimming. Titus was home and I had to do school. And you made those um, canopic jars with Granny, didn't you? They're busy learning about Egypt at the moment, and so they made some canopic jars. Which just jar little, little examples out of modeling clay which the Egyptians used to put the, the, insides. the organs in when they did the mummification process. The main four was a jackal, a falcon, and a baboon, and a human. <coughs> oh, excuse me. And what stored what? Um, I'm getting, I got a bit confused, but I think it's a jackal. No, a falcon is the, in, is the gut. Mm-hmm. A baboon is the liver or the... Who gets the heart? Uh, no, one gets, no one gets the heart. The no. heart gets left in. Oh, does it? Yes, because it apparently has to be weighed in the afterlife. And it has to be lighter than this stone on the scale if they're going to be let into this lovely world. Oh, really? I didn't know that. So what does your heart say if you were good or bad? Yes. Ah. So the heart had to be left. And does your brain go in a jar? Uh, no, they believe your brain did nothing. So that they stuck a stick up your nose, swizzled your brain out, and then pulled it out. They believe your brain didn't do anything. Yes. <laughs> so they stuck a hooky stick up your nose, swirled your brain around, and so it would be all fluffy and then pulled it. That is disgusting. I know. Yay. <laughs> That's how civilization has changed. It does a bit, doesn't it? <laughs> and you've also been watching some series on uh, Egypt and the tombs and that the next sort of thing one as well. I want. The next one that we're going to, the next year, there are two episodes on each thing. Mm -hmm. There's one on Ramesses, one on Tutankhamun, uh, and one, and then there's this one on the, the Rosetta, Rosetta Stone. Yes, they're cool because it's about. They tell the story of all my. You have to look at the camera. They tell the story of the finders and what they find. Yeah, so it's quite. They they kind of jump from showing what the history of that particular Egyptian person was, so Tutankhamun or whatever. And they'll tell you his story and what he was doing, and then they jump to the person that found you know the the um, tomb. Kaylee. Um, uh, I've got the word Tomb Raider stuck in my head, but it's not. The the um, historian or whoever that found them. So um, you were... learned about Carter who found or just kept at knowing that there was a tomb. Um, and uh, there was very little known about Tutankhamun and he, was he died quite young and was buried in a tomb that wasn't actually designed for him. And this is sort of why his, uh, he's become so famous in that his tomb was relatively untouched and unraided. And so they found a lot more in that tomb than they found in many others, even though he wasn't actually the most prominent pharaoh in Egypt. He has taught us a lot about Egypt because he's one of the few um, that actually had stuff in it that they could get a good idea of what the, the tombs would look like. And the other one was, um, what's the man's name? Bell. Balzoni, Balzoni and his finding the stuff, Balzoni. finding the stuff for um, Ramesses the second. He was um, a very big, sort of gigantic guy, and he was a strong man. But he was also 
had an incredibly um, clever uh, brain for figuring out um, what's the word I'm looking for? Not, it's not architecture. It's like engineering almost. Like how you would get into something or how you would, there was this one head that they, of, of the Ramesses statue that had fallen over and they wanted to get it removed and no one else could figure out how to remove it. And so he had this great um, mind for engineering ways and pulleys and lifts and all of these kind of things that you could get at some of these things and that yeah, was what, just music right? yeah and he was in again these both of them were very keen to the historical preservation of the of the stuff and the tombs and things they found and, and got artists you know nowadays we just take photos of it but got artists into to draw it and to um, do a document everything very in depth so that was quite that's what you've been doing for schoolwork so i'll let you off not having done as much crafting do better for next week <laughs> i have finished my okay challenge for next week okay what's finish my spinning for the pig finish the pig and because if you're doing 15 minutes every day you yeah. could definitely finish and the pig. Okay. let's say seven more squares on the back okay that's good so what should I, I'm going to finish this off because I'm going to finish it today. But that's not a hard challenge. No, it's not. Give yourself a challenge. Because we're waiting, so we're in whips. We're in whips, yeah. So I'm doing the, Two. sorry, it's a bit slower, the one by one twisted rib on the top of my sock. Two. I will <laughs> I cast on the um, front of the Sylvie cardigan as you're not done very much that's it for what i've done with that that's the one i'm making for alexander teacher Karen. for those that don't know let's try and find some I'm, being quiet. I'm sure most of you know the sylvie cardigan or coat it's kind of like a longish coat and Can it's got this one? we'll see and it's got a kind of a, a cable detail up the back hope you can see it mine is in um the pattern calls for a bulky weight yarn um, and a six mil needle. I am using the Stylecraft Aran, which is 20% wool and 80% There's acrylic, but it's actually very yarn. nice. Oh, it's actually a very nice. It's coming up much more. Post box kind of, yeah, it's kind of more post box red. It's more of a scarlety. Mm -hmm. Not really, like a, maybe if we hold it through the back. Is that yeah, better? Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Um, so that's mine is an Aran weight and the pattern is a bulky. So I'm doing mine on a four and a half mil needle and needing to do maths Ooh, as I go can, along. Yeah. Let Papa do the maths. I do. I do. The last time I was working out all these stitches and stuff over here, I was like, okay, I've got this many stitches and this many rows and I need to do this and this many decreases and then Papa had to work it out for me. <laughs> So maybe my challenge can be, do you think I can finish the whole front, of the whole one front? Because uh, you do it in two pieces. I have two <clears throat> challenges, I'm like finishing my spinning and... Yeah, so but you know how much the front of a coat is? <laughs> <laughs> okay, what else can, can I challenge you with? Uh, half another log cabin square. Finish the whole front of the Sylvie and a log cabin square. Jeez, you're a hard taskmaster. Mine is seven squares. I'll try. I must get this. Line. You know, I've got so many other things I want to get on. I want to do the, the um. You re You haven't got as many things on at the moment. I've got so many things on. I'm not showing now. I mean, all those those two cowls I cast on, what and I mean? need to do the star uh, shower one and the one out of the one with the um. You have quite a few whips that I have not that we have not that has not come. Out of the bag for a while. I know. Um, and I want to do the design for the mm. uh, mittens, mittens and for the, the um, and the what's socks it called? and the jersey oh, and the pants. I'm not doing socks and jersey and pants. <laughs> oh my word, child. You have to do socks. <laughs> no, you see, I've never designed socks. I'm really nervous you about designing design socks. Sock. If you do, you could do it as a cuff down. And then do that as the ribbing like that, and then make it go pointier in the front. I didn't think of that. Maybe. I don't know. We'll see. Um, I thought other was to do it on the side of a leg, you know, so the it was the rib and then it did a sort of a I think it would look prettier <laughs> in the front more people would see it. 
And it looks but the, what, like going down the foot and, and then onto here? Like that. Do you really see your pants cover that? Yeah. You'd have to make it go. Or you, you can, your pants cover this. That's true. <laughs> you will know it's there, and I think that I'd like it in the front because sometimes you wear more open shoes and your trousers cover the sides. But it's so, what do you mean, just to make a, a V coming down here in that yeah. table? Make it V. I don't know. Anyway, I'm not sure the socks are on the cards, but I will definitely do some fingerless mittens. And this cowl. And a cowl. So that will have to happen at some point. But um, I think. And a shawl. You could do I, a shawl. I'm really worried that if I don't. I could do it in a shawl. I'm not sure how, but. You could. If you did the V shape and then did an edging around it. I don't know. know. I'll think about it. I love it. the pattern design. No, clearly. <laughs> but I want to, you see, the problem with casting all these things on is that it is really now winter and I'm not finishing Corinne's coat as quick as I should because I keep getting distracted. So I think the challenge must be before I cast on those another design. Another log cabin sweater. And well, Corrin's I think I must just really focus Corrin's on getting Corinne's co coat done. So Finish your socks. Mm. No more knitting. I wanted to get coat. the. Uh, it's just the June mustard. socks done, so I didn't leave them for the last minute. Yeah, it must just slow. It's backwards like this, doing ribbing. It's backwards and forwards and backwards and forwards, and it makes it slower to knit. You could do it while watching your Grey's Anatomy. I do. <laughs> I'm now on season 10. I've watched all the way from the beginning. To, you know what the problem is? What? That after season 11, mm -hmm. there isn't any more yet. I think they're talking about filming season 12. But there isn't anymore. And they keep killing everybody off because it's been so many years that the character that the actors and actresses have been on the series that some of the actors and actresses move on. Why? And then they kill them off. They don't even if you even move away. I don't know why they've got this obsession with killing off everybody that needs to leave the what show. What do they kill? Oh the one jumped in front of a bus to save somebody and got killed, and the one uh got electrocuted this in water this last season. And two died in a plane accident, and some were shot, and it's like, yo. Why do they have to kill them? Can't they, let, can't they say that they... They moved away somewhere else. I don't they know. They moved to a lost. different country. <laughs> Anyone that runs goes and asks me this, they can watch this, which I doubt. <laughs> yeah, I'm not so sure the makers of Grey's and Natalie watch our podcast, my love. Well, they, <clears> but <throat> if they do, we can tell them that they're... It should let them just move to another country. Well, I think it doesn't make it as dramatic. The one girl joined the army to be, like, went to be a, the head of the army doctor, so she left. They didn't kill her all. <laughs> but the main character. I would say. No, and, and then another, another one got cancer and moved away. Um, so a couple have moved. But an awful lot of them, they like to kill them. <laughs> so the actors have more to, dramatic. So you say, I'm here, let me, us kill you so you can go. Something like that. So we'll have to see what happens and see. And then to find something else to watch. I'm going to have to pick more carefully. I'm going to have to pick something very girly or something very that the geek is really not interested in. So it doesn't something, disturb his studies. Something very, very girly. Orange is the new black has started again. He's What's not Orange that interested in that. Black? It's like a woman prison series. Um, uh, prison. Yeah. What's it's about the, this woman that lands up going to a woman's prison and what happens there. So um, they all shout at each other. Pretty much. Um, Isn't that what Grey's Anatomy is? I, I don't well, no, they're not in prison in Grey's Anatomy. They're in a hospital. They're surgeons. But I don't think they were. I would not want to go to a hospital like that. Uh, in bed, I can hear screeching at each other. They're not screeching. You're so silly. Um, I'm going to have to find it. What do you not like? You really didn't like... Once upon a time. Remember, we watched Once yes, Upon a Time. But he you can't like watch this. that without me. Oh, yes, of course, I can't. Um, and season four has not come out yet. No. What else is there? Please give me some ideas of series that I can watch. Season four that needs the to geek, come out. That the geek probably would not want to watch. Um, that I can watch after I'm finished Grey's Anatomy while he's busy studying at night. Um, and in that sort of really roundabout way. Because we seem to have done everything out of order. I think that's it. Have we done? Uh, we've only been recording for... No, but we've done this in segments. So it's going to be long by the time we add it together. And I need to go fetch Titus from school in a few minutes. The only other thing is to mention the Opposites Knit Along. In my group, um, 
that I'm doing with the Yonder Woman. So you can knit anything that you can convince us fits into the opposites theme. And it will run on the Yonder Woman's podcast and group as well as mine. So And you can enter into both for double the chances of winning. So go and have a look for that on both groups. You can knit something in a color opposite to what you use from a yarn or a pattern from someone on the opposite side of the world to you. You could knit an opposite construction to what you used to. You know, you could go um, cuff down if you usually do toe up or toe up if you usually do cuff down, which is what Melinda and I are doing. We're doing opposite when way around socks when I didn't concentrate. So I still have to cast on some cuff down socks. So I think I might do some Hermione every day socks, yes. And uh, you could do your... I don't want to say the name of it. Your winter yarn that you going to do cuff down. Oh, you mean for July? The, yes, because yes, I mean it runs for June and July, so I can but do my July you know socks. It, have you told us anyone it's called? No. Well, you shouldn't. <laughs> no, I'm not. So don't you tell her either. I need to make the bag for it, but I can't uh, find the one thing I need to make the bag. With. I know. We've we've gone into every single shop. Where are we gonna find it? Can we say what it's called? No, I wonder if the... Anyway, we must go and have a look. And then when people see it, then they'll see it. So the last few days to enter the winter is coming. Knit along, shawl knit along, because it ends on the 21st. Which so that would be next week's, day. Next anyway. week's Sunday. And um, Sunday. we'll record on Monday. So we'll okay. close it okay. then and we'll record on Monday. People so, are probably wondering what I'm knitting on. Are you getting on Caleb's wash? Caleb's now? wash girl. Yeah. Caleb finished his log cabin square. He did finish log so cabin square. So he started his new one. Caleb! Caleb! But he's watching, um, I'll go he's playing Minecraft with headphones well, I'll on. Just fix, I'll just fix the square. <laughs> Shame. Come and show you. You finished the log cabin square, didn't you? Come on! Can I show Come your square? Oh, have you had headphones on? <laughs> You've got bright <laughs> ears. <laughs> Turn your head to the side. <laughs> so you can see it's got bright red ears. <laughs> um, so who, who gets it first? Me. You. And it's the first one for your log cabin. And ends are sewn in. Ow. Well, most of his ends are sewn in because Granny sewed in his ends. And I don't know why Granny gets to sew in all your ends. I have to say, I think I'm going to take my knitting to Granny's <laughs> house and get it to sew. So there's just a few on the ends, the edges that he hadn't done yet that she hasn't sewn in. So that's your first log cabin square. And you want yours edged in? White. In white. And I'm going to get some black to edge mine in. So, well done, my boy. Have you started the next one? Can I uh, yeah, 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 yeah. I think you just started a bit of yellow for the next one. Yeah. Uh, okay, thanks, my boy. Oh, yeah. my <laughs> Um. So that's the little yes, long. That's everything from us. Yeah. And we'll see you um, next week. Yeah.